Hey guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video we'll be talking about a very interesting topic and that is trichinosis which is also commonly known as trichinolosis and this is a parasitic worm infection of the body. So let's get started. So what is trichinosis? Trichinosis, which is also commonly known as trichinellosis, is a type of roundworm parasitic infection which requires a host body to live in and reproduce. This infection is caused by the parasite called trichinella spiralis and occurs primarily among meat-eating animals which are carnivores such as bears and foxes or meat and plant-eating animals or omnivores such as domestic pigs and wild boar. The trichinosis infection is acquired by humans when they unknowingly ingest the roundworm larvae in raw or undercooked meat. So from this definition of trichinosis, we understand that it's actually caused by this parasite called trichinella spiralis, and this is actually what it looks like microscopically. So the parasite usually infects some carnivorous and omnivorous animals such as bears, foxes, domestic pigs, etc and can only be transmitted to the human if we unknowingly ingest the larvae which is found in raw or undercooked meat. So I want to explore that topic a little further. So let's take a closer look at how one can contract trichinosis. So the trichinella larvae live in the muscle tissue of animals, typically pigs, wild boars, foxes, bears, walruses, and many other carnivores. An individual may develop trichinosis if they eat uncooked, undercooked, or underprocessed meat from an animal that carries the parasite. In most individuals, the infections arise from eating pork, particularly in regions where pigs are fed uncooked meat scraps and garbage, or from eating meat from wild boar, bear, or walrus. So in this image on the left side of my screen, we see that the parasite actually commonly infests wild animals such as bear, mice, boar, and also commonly affect pigs, which many of us consume. So the parasite itself is found in its larvae form and actually infiltrates the striated muscles of these animals. So this is how when we ingest these partially raw or undercooked meat products, the larvae will reach our intestines and will be released into the small intestine. And the adult worms in the small intestine will actually lay more eggs, which develop into larvae. And that larvae actually reaches our circulation, which is how it gets to the various different muscle groups in our body. So it actually starts to infiltrate our group of striated muscles. And in this way, this is how the human contracts the infection. So I want to explore a little more about the two actual stages of the disease, and that is the intestinal phase, which occurs when one ingests the contaminated meat and the larvae reaches the intestine. And then I want to talk about the muscular phase, which explores what happens when these larvae actually infiltrate the human striated muscle. So let's explore this further. So what are the signs and symptoms of trichinosis? So in mild cases of trichinosis, only a small number of parasites will enter the individual's body, and this may cause no obvious signs or symptoms. In more severe cases, the trichinosis symptoms vary depending on the stage of the infection number of invading larvae, tissues invaded, and the general physical condition of the person. So the symptoms of trichinosis can occur in two stages. Stage 1, which is called the intestinal infection, develops one to two days after eating contaminated meat, and the patient here will experience nausea, diarrhea, abdominal cramps, and a fever. So we have this larvae which exists in the sliced portions of pork meat that we ingest. And if this meat is inadequately cooked and one ingests this uncooked meat, we reach the intestinal infection stage of the disease. So this actually occurs one to two days after ingesting the contaminated meat. And here the patient will experience nausea, diarrhea, abdominal cramps and fever. So once this stage is completed, these larvae will actually grow into full adults which is basically what is pictured here, these small longitudinal cylindrical worms. And these adult worms can actually produce more larvae, which actually begin to infiltrate the muscle. So then we have the infective stage or the muscular phase of the disease. So stage two is where the larvae invasion of the muscle occurs. And this occurs between the seventh and 15th day. And this causes the patients to experience extreme muscle pain and tenderness, weakness, fever, headache, 
and the swelling of the face, particularly around the eyes. And in very few cases, in severe infections, if many larvae are present, the heart, brain and the lungs may become inflamed as well. So heart failure, abnormal heart rhythms, seizures and severe breathing problems may result. And death may occur, but is usually very rare. So how can one diagnose trichinosis? So the initial diagnosis of this disease is based on the classic signs and symptoms, the swelling around the eyes, the muscle inflammation and fever. But to confirm the diagnosis, the doctor will order blood tests and this will show an increase in the number of a certain type of white blood cell called the eosinophils or the formation of specific antibodies against the trichinella spiralis parasite after several weeks. We can also do a muscle biopsy because the larvae bury themselves in the striated muscles, a muscle biopsy, which means the removal of a small piece of muscle, is done, and this is examined under the microscope to look for the trichinella larvae. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of trichinosis. So the trichinosis infection doesn't always require treatment, and in many cases may actually resolve on its own. However, in confirmed cases of the disease, medications to manage symptoms and to prevent complications from developing must be prescribed. The medical treatment of this infection consists of antiparasitic medications such as albendazole and mebendazole to treat the parasitic infection, steroids which can help control inflammation, and pain medication for muscle aches. And that brings us to the end of this video on trichinosis Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you would like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.